Tonight on Sports Pause, the women's field hockey team continues Big East play against Villanova. Plus, women's hockey began their season in an exhibition game against rival in-state UConn. And Santino Mayoni sits down with women's soccer goalkeeper Sofia Los Pinoso for a Sports Pause exclusive. All that and more starting on Sports Pause now. Welcome to Sports Pause. I'm Aaron Epstein, and joining me is Seth Bromowitz. Seth, we got a lot of great sport, Quinnipiac sports news to cover tonight. Are you ready? You know it. We both just broke the fast, and Aaron, I am excited to be here. First off, we got some major news about the men's hockey team. After winning the national championship and finishing first in the USCHO polls, the men's ice hockey team has been placed at number two of this season's first poll. The Bobcats earned 22 first place votes, while number one Boston University earned 17. Minnesota, the team that Quinnipiac beat for the national title, was placed in third with 10 votes, while Denver and Michigan round out the top five. From ice hockey to field hockey, the Bobcats find themselves in unfamiliar territory that they haven't seen in seven years. Junior forward Lucia Pompeo went on to be named Big East Player of the Week, the first Bobcat to be honored since 2016 when Savannah Riley was recognized in the last two games of their three-game stretch. Pompeo scored three goals for six points in their 4-1 win over Bryant and 2-1 win over Providence to start Big East play. She recorded the game-winning goals in each contest. After kicking off Big East play with a road win, the Bobcats returned home to play Villanova. So Quinnipiac faces off against Villanova in their second Big East game of the year. Can they go to 2-0, Aaron? How do you think they're going to fare? I mean, we'll find out. Well, let's go to the very first quarter of the game as we will see a penalty corner change to a penalty stroke where Lucia Pompeo scores the game's first goal after earning player of the week in the Big East. Amelia Massarelli takes the ball up the middle of the field with a swarm of Wildcats. She gets the ball into the back of the net and then goes flying next to the net just for, just for show. Uh, and now we see the other Pompeo sister, Sophia Pompeo, take the ball all the way down the field, beat the Villanova defender, and get the ball right past Emma Leppert for the goal. And right before, at the end of the very first quarter, Kate Vogel rips a shot and gets it deflected. Then Megan Mitchell settles it and scores the first goal for Villanova. Let's move to the second quarter. We see Megan Mitchell again take the shot, and it gets right past Christina Torres as Villanova is right back in this game to tie it up. As we move into the third quarter, Gemma Lysak passes the ball up the field. A shot is taken, but Torres saves it, and Mitchell scores off the rebound. This would be her third goal of the game, as Villanova would then tie it 3-3, three to three, certainly showing her dominance in this game so far. And now, as this game comes down to the fourth and final quarter of the game, let's see who will score the winning goal. Who do you think it's going to be, Aaron? It's really too tough to call. Well, would you be surprised if I told you that Megan Mitchell does it again? Villanova takes the penalty corner in the last few minutes of the game. Mitchell rips a shot at the top of the arch and scores. This is her fourth goal of the game and the lone score of the Wildcats. Quinnipiac loses this game to the Wildcats 4-3, making them 1-1 one one in conference play and 3-3 three three overall. After falling late to Villanova, field hockey beat reporter Ben Rickavicious breaks down what went wrong and how the Bobcats can rebound. History often repeats itself. Last season, the Quinnipiac Bobcats entered Big East play on the road against Temple. They were leading that game 3-0 at halftime and ended up losing 6-3. On Friday, Quinnipiac took on Villanova and was, were leading that game three to nothing. At the end of the game, they lost four to three. Will the Bobcats be able to bounce back? Quinnipiac scored their only three goals within the first 10 minutes of the game while Villanova's goals were spread out. They made the Bobcats defense pay for small mistakes. For Villanova, it was star forward Megan Mitchell who scored a career high four goals to complete the comeback effort. Field hockey head coach Nina Klein talked about the difference in play between the first quarter and the rest of the game. 
I mean, I think it's just the quality of the skill overall just needs to be better at times. I think we, we have really good threatening attack forwards sometimes, and then just the final skill isn't, isn't where it needs to be. I, don't, I wouldn't say there's any rhyme or reason. It's just they need to you know, trust the skill and, and just execute a bit better. Although the Bobcats struggled on penalty corners, miscommunication on passes allowed the Wildcats to get better offensive opportunities. In some cases, the Bobcats were able to recover on defense, but Villanova took advantage of Quinnipiac having to rush back. One thing Klein has her eyes on is picking up the pace defensively. I would say just intercepting. I mean, a team that hits like Villanova did today, I think we were a little uh, on our back foot and we, we prevented our, you know, some good come ups for us moving forward. So I think intercepting needs to be one thing. Um, definitely just cleaning up defensively. I mean, I, I never want to have to concede three goals, um, let alone, you know, lose a game that you're, you're up, you know, by that many. So I think it's just cleaning up what we have to do defensively. During the second half, Klein put Ava Lavallo in on defense. The change of personnel is something to keep an eye on. I, I just feel like they were really, really strong going down the right side, and, and we wanted to switch it up. Ava's been great in practice, and it was just a, a game-time decision that we thought you know would pay off. And then we flipped Liv over there, who's a seasoned fifth year, um, to alleviate some of the stress of the right side. The Bobcats will have two big opportunities to bounce back on Sunday against Yale at home and on the road against Big East opponent Georgetown on the road. I'm Ben Rickovicious, Q30 Sports. After the loss to Villanova on Friday, the Bobcats took on the Yale Bulldogs Sunday afternoon. Take the highlight. On Sunday, Quinnipiac took on the rival Yale Bulldogs looking to bounce back after a tough loss to Villanova. The last two times the Bulldogs and Bobcats faced off, both games were decided in overtime. Now let's start going on to the first quarter. Less than five minutes into the game, graduate student midfielder Juliana Capello strikes a tomahawk from just inside the circle for a quick 1-0 lead. This was the fourth straight game that, that Quinnipiac has struck first. Into the second quarter, sophomore goalkeeper Christina Torres was tested with a stroke, but Torres with the diving save to make sure the Bobcats secure the lead. It didn't take Yale long to get another opportunity to tie this game up. Yale gets a quick insert off the corner for a direct shot into the left corner of the net. Senior forward Ashley Kim with the rocket to tie this game 1-1. Both teams were hoping to break the tie moving into the second half. Yale had a golden opportunity in, in a penalty corner, but Torres shows off her skills with not one, but two great saves. The Bulldogs weren't done with this penalty corner opportunities. Yale with the direct shot that gets tipped by junior midfielder Ellie Barlow to put the Bulldogs up on top. Nina Klein's squad suddenly finds themselves down with only one quarter to go. The Bobcats at the end of the game had an 11 vs 9 opportunity, but couldn't come back and finish the weekend with two losses. Now the team will look to bounce back at Georgetown on Friday. After, take, after taking the loss to the Bulldogs, field hockey beat reporter Brittany Braun-Lieben broke down what, what went wrong. On Sunday, the Bobcats took on the Bulldogs while it was raining cats and dogs, but the Yale Bulldogs did win the game 2-1. to one. Quinnipiac had opportunities but could not emphasize on any of them. I think we're definitely break some film of the defensive end, um, and then attacking-wise, it's just I think we need some more reps, and also maybe we'll draw up some new plays, but I think, you know, it's, it's still execution at the end of the day. We had probably two close ones that could have gotten the back of the net, but we just couldn't find a way today. I'd say finishing in like the five to seven meter zone. We, I feel like we're struggling in tight zones when there's a lot of pressure and there's a couple bodies in front of us, um, just being able to get shots off and, and get it in the back of the cage. The Quinnipiac Bobcats are ranked 19th in average penalty corner attempts per game and converted zero of their six penalty corners today. So we tend to train them at the end of practice when there's full fatigue because that's usually what is happening during the game. You're just fully, you know, laying out and then you get a corner and then you have to execute and it's just, it's a, it's a power play. So I think drawing up a couple new plays as well as just elevating how we're practicing them is going to be very helpful moving forward. Klein also explained how she wants to see her team improve moving back into Big East play. You know, we're still hunting for a shutout and, and making sure that we're shutting down opportunities outside the circle. That's definitely something that we need to, to grow from. And then finishing on attacking corners is, is something we need to do as well as, you know, finishing in transition. We're our best when we're, when we're competing and going at speed forward and, and passing on transition. So I think that's just something that we really want to focus in on. After the Bobcats have taken on the Bulldogs, they'll be moving on to the Georgetown Hoyas next Friday to see if they can fix their mistakes. I'm Brittany Brown-Lieben for Q30 Sports. With the Bobcats going 0-2 over the weekend, let's take a look at the latest Big East standings. 
Liberty is at the top of the Big East at 9-1 while being 2-0 and in conference play. The only other team that is undefeated in conference play is Villanova, sitting in second. Quinnipiac is in fourth place, right in the middle of the pack, being 1-1 one one in conference play and 3-4 and overall. Quinnipiac will take on the Georgetown Hoyas this upcoming Friday. The women's soccer team returned to the pitch on Saturday. Let's see how they did. Women's soccer looked to bounce back in their first home mat game of the season, as Canisius is coming into this one with four wins, one loss, and four ties. How about that? We'll drop you off in the first half. Courtney Chokol on the breakaway, trying to go coast to coast. She breaks one tackle attempt, keeps moving, breaks another one, and stays on her feet. She'll dump it off to Emily Vandervlei, who shoots but can't get it to go. A fantastic defensive play by Sylvia Constantine. Scoreless tie through the first 45, onto the second half, off the free kick, Vandervlei beautifully sets up the captain, Olivia Scott, for a wide open goal. You'll get a second look here after the celebration. What a setup, Seth. Absolutely. Normally you use the head to set up and think of a play, but this time she used it to make the play. The Bobcats are looking to add Madison Alves attacking near the baseline. Pass goes to Chokol, who puts it too high off the top bar, off the rebound of Scott, who also goes off the top bar. A double doink missed opportunity for the Bobcats. Later in the half, Chokol sends one into the box and off the rebound. Melinda Branco sends it off the goalkeeper's hands to make it a 2-0 game. Quinnipiac would ride that margin to the final minute as they beat the Golden Griffins 2-0. An absolutely dominant game on both sides for the Bobcats. They put up 21 shots compared to just the two they allowed. Quinnipiac is yet to allow a goal against MAC opponents this year. With the win, the Bobcats moved to 2-0 in MAC conference play. Here's how the standings look throughout the conference. Quinnipiac has tied with Fairfield for first place, both with six points. The Bobcats and Sags are 2-0 in conference play, but the Bobcats have the better overall record at 4-3. Below Quinnipiac and Fairfield sits Manhattan with a 1-0-2 conference record, along with a three-way tie between Canisius, Maris, and Niagara. Quinnipiac will try to stay undefeated in MAC conference play when they take on the Ryder Bronx this Saturday. Another Bobcat has earned a MAC award after their win over Canisius. Goalkeeper Sofia Lospinoso earned the MAC Defensive Player of the Week award after keeping a clean sheet on Saturday. This was Los Pinosa's third shutout of the season. This was also her third time being awarded the MAC Defensive Player of the Week. The starting goalkeeper of the reigning MAC champions has been consistent all year long, with three of her seven games being shutouts. Los Pinosa averages two saves per game this season, with a 4-3 record. Earlier this weekend, women's soccer beat reporter Santino Mayoni sat down with Los Pinosa in a Q30 exclusive interview. Thanks, guys. I am sitting down here with an for an exclusive interview with women's soccer goalkeeper Sofia Los Pinoso. Sofia, thanks for joining us. No problem. Awesome. All right, so we'll get into the first question. So, Sofia, I want to talk to you about your expectations coming into this year. Obviously, you're going into your fourth season here. You won the MAC title last year. What were your expectations personally coming into this season? Yeah, personally, um, we, of course, want to, you know, withstand the title, and we want to uh, take that into this season and what we came out of last season. Um, we obviously want that again, but personally, um, over the summer, I was looking to grow not only as a person, but like, of course, as a goalkeeper and um, become more fearless, I'd say, um, because that's always been kind of one of my downfalls. Um, so yeah, I just, over the summer, I've been working on that, um, and I feel like I've semi-achieved that, so I'm, I'm still working on it, but when you talk about you know skills as a goalkeeper, in, in your per, per, uh, personal opinion, what do you think is the most vital uh, skill for a goalkeeper to possess? That's that's a great question. I'm I'd say definitely um, like mental toughness. Um, it's a super super hard position, um, and I'm not only saying that because I am one, um, but because I know a lot of goalkeepers, and like collectively we struggle with um, you know you let a goal in and like doesn't matter you got to get right back into it and um, you know next play has kind of been my mentality in terms of your your how vocal you are on the field I and mean, we talked about this through, uh, earlier on in the season you are by far on the team the most vocal player both on and off the field at least from what I hear when I'm at the games why is it so important at least for you to be so vocal to your teammates and just you know kind of hype them up during the game right um, that's like a common trait of a goalkeeper just whether you want to or, or not really um, but Everyone on the team knows that when I'm screaming, it's not because we're doing bad or, or good, really. 
but it's it's just that you know I'm trying to get my point across and get my voice to be heard even at the at the front um, so yeah I feel like it's it's I feel like it's important because I can see everything so like if I'm telling you to step or drop or whatever and it's it's vital you know it's gonna change what's coming or what happened so and within you know you're in your fourth season now so throughout your time here what would you say is the skill that you've most improved on is it that is it that you know being vocal on the field or would you say it's something else yeah coming in I, I was definitely more quiet um, especially you know freshmen you know you're nervous but yeah as my fourth season as we get into it it's definitely different in that sense and I'm feeling more confident and more you know yeah confident in my abilities and I just you know am able to open my mouth more and and you know give direction and in, in the sense that you know I'm confident that I'm giving the right direction I was uh, say Sofia Lospinosa Santino Mayoni thank you guys back to you guys at the desk we now have to take our first break of the night but let's take a look at what's coming up for when we come back we have volleyball road trip where they take on Marist and Siena let's see who's gonna win those games and the ice has been paved as the women's ice hockey team opens up the season at MNT Bank Arena against an in-state rival. Stay tuned for more. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? Why? Am I? Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to Sports Pause. Before the men's soccer team began MAC play, the Bobcats traveled to New York City and faced Columbia. The Bobcats were outsmarted by the Ivy League school as they were shut out 2 to nothing. Columbia scored one goal in each half. Jake Novoshelsky of the Lions kicked it off, intercepting an errant pass in the box for an open net goal. In the second, Brandon Newman looks to cross across the box before Jiao Lima buried it in the bottom corner of the net. The Bobcats and Lions both had nine total shots, with Bobcats only getting three on net. Both Columbia's Michael Kaladi and Quinnipiac's Noah Silverman received red cards in the match. Hoping to bounce back from the loss, the Bobcats traveled upstate to Buffalo to begin MAC play. Fifth year forward Brag Austin had the initial strike of the game as Henry Ernst ends, finds the fifth year across the crease less than 10 minutes in. 10 minutes after the first goal, Austin takes the corner kick, finding sophomore defender Yao Pinto for his first NCAA goal with the header. But Canisius Tariq El Zamar made it a one goal game before halftime, and Cody Sarkoti scored the equalizer four minutes into the second half. Austin and Eric Langwagen then connected for Austin's fourth goal of the season to give Quinnipiac a 3-2 lead. However, Kyle Pollard would tie the game up in the 80th minute and the game would end in a 3-3 draw. Despite not returning to Hamden with a win, the Intermac game did bring back a positive. 
Farag Asin was named as MAC Offensive Player of the Week. It's his first weekly honor of the season after scoring two goals and recording one assist in the tie at Canisius. The Norwegian forward has now won the award at least once in each of the last three seasons. He leads the Bobcats in goals with four and will look to keep things going when the Bobcats take on Bryant tomorrow. Moving on to Burkhan Court, Quinnipiac Volleyball had another player earn a weekly award. Sophomore outside hitter Ymir Ganesh was awarded with MAC Player of the Week honors. Ganesh has now been named the MAC Player of the Week twice this season. This is the fifth weekly volleyball MAC award earned by Bobcat this year. Ganesh is leading the MAC conference with 21 service aces and is third in the conference in both points with 143 and a half and kills with 120. On Saturday, the Bobcats took on Marist on the road. Let's see if they could extend their winning streak. Quinnipiac dropped the first two sets, but were able to com complete the comeback and collect another victory, winning 3-2. Ginevra Giovanni led the team with 17 kills, with Yamir Ganesh in second with 13 kills. The Bobcats extended their win streak to, to three and improved their MAC conference record to 3-0. Quinnipiac looked to add to their win streak again, facing off with Siena on Sunday. The Bobcats stayed red hot and took an early lead, winning the first two sets. The Saints then took the third set, but the Bobcats bounced back to take the fourth set to beat the Saints 3-1. This win extends their win streak to four games and moves their MAC conference record to 4-0. Alexandra Tennant led the Bobcats with 16 kills. Quinnipiac will look to win their fifth straight conference match on Saturday against Iona. After a weekend of games, let's check the updated standings and see where Quinnipiac stands. The Bobcats find themselves in first place as the only team that is undefeated in MAC play. Quinnipiac also has the best overall record at 8 and 5. Fairfield, Iona, and Marist are all tied at 3 and 1 in conference play. Fairfield is the only other team in the MAC besides Quinnipiac that has a winning overall record, while Quinnipiac is the only team that is undefeated at home this season. And as the leaves turn colors, M&T Bank Arena opens its doors for the 2023-24 seasons. The number eight women's ice hockey team faced the University of Connecticut in an exhibition match. This Saturday, the Bobcats came back from down 3-1 behind a two-goal game from sophomore winger Madison Chandler. Going into overtime, co-captain Kate Riley ended it after nailing her own rebound for the 4-3 victory. The Bobcats will get their season going for real this weekend with back-to-back -back home games against Maine. We have to head out for our final break of the night, but make sure to stay with us because when we return... The men's lacrosse team has a coaching shakeup as an assistant turns to an associate. Who is it? Stay tuned and we will find out. And it's that time again. Top five plays of the week. Certainly my favorite time of the week. We'll be right back. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Meet the scan. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you! But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just not the type. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? 
there's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, My kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Welcome back to Sports Pause. Hey, Seth, you ever played rugby before? I can't say that I have, Aaron. Well, the Quinnipiac Bobcats took on the Dartmouth Big Green on the road on Saturday. Coming off a win in their first road game of the season at Navy, look to start a win streak against Dartmouth. The Bobcats ended up allowing 47 points to the Big Green offense. The Bobcats were only able to score 10 points in the loss. Gracie Cartwright was the only Bobcat to find the try zone after 83 minutes of play. Quinnipiac will look to bounce back against Sacred Heart this upcoming Saturday. Switching over to cross country, a Quinnipiac Bobcat finished first in the Jasper Fall cross country invite. Senior Liv DiStefano led the Bobcats to a team victory on Saturday. This was DiStefano's third collegiate victory. Her overall time was 20 minutes and 57 seconds, finishing seven seconds ahead of second place. The next meet for, for DiStefano and the cross country team is the, is the Paul Short Invitational in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. The men's tennis team kicked off their year this past weekend in Fairfield. In the first day of the Fairfield Invitational, the Bobcats walked out with 12 victories. In singles matches, the Bobcats took 5 out of 7 matches, and in doubles matches, 7 out of the 10 matches were taken by Quinnipiac, featuring several wins by pairs Shari Yasut and Daniel Velik, Ayoto Arakaki and Donovan Brown, and Finn Burridge and Carlos Braun Simo. On the women's side, the Bobcats traveled to West Point for the weekend. The West Point invite hosted by Army was highlighted by a win in the B doubles bracket by Vera Sekarina and Anga Shankara. Won the final match 6-3 over UConn. Shankara has now won six consecutive doubles matches and Sekarina finished the invite 7-1 in doubles and singles matches. Ella Lewis had an impressive invite herself going 5-2 in doubles and singles matches. Men's lacrosse made a staffing promotion this week. Casey Aiden Schenk has been promoted from assistant coach to associate head coach. Aiden Schenk joined head coach Mason Poley's staff in 2019 and helped the program to a 7-6 record behind the top-rated offense in the MAC last season. Aiden Schenk previously coached at Lehigh University, his alma mater. Seth, guess what time it is? Is it top five time? You know it. You want to start us off? Absolutely, and we're going to start with play number five from the volleyball trip to Marist. Ginevra Giovannioni lets the Red Foxes know she's back with this powerful third set spike. And the Bobcats. Over, over to field hockey now. Emilia Malisari on the breakaway beats the Villanova defender and finds the net for her fourth goal this season. Q, you drop this one. Kicking over to soccer for play three. And look at this setup. Emily Vanderblay finds a wide open Olivia Scott with her header to give QU a 1-0 lead. Second look here, Vanderblay caught the Golden Griffins napping using her header on the play. That was a crazy goal. But how about some defense? Penalty stroke for Yale. These are usually high percent shots, but Christina Torres loves those odds. Reads the shot like a book and keeps it out of the net. Bobcats drop this one 2-1. Laying it all out on the grass for her team is Christina Torres. But number one, what else makes sense? How about a preseason walk-off? Kate Riley gets her own rebound and gets it past the goalie's glove for the overtime win. She's then mobbed by her teammates. Because what better than celebrating an opening season win? Look at this again. Made the shot with a defender on top of her. This sure looks like a sign of great things to come. Right, Aaron? I am so hyped for hockey season. I can feel it in my bones that it's almost here, and I cannot wait. Well, personally, Aaron, I was at this hockey game calling it with QBSN, and it was absolutely electric to see it happen and unfold. What was I, your favorite play? My favorite play? Number one as well. Number one, can't go wrong with number one. It's why it's number one on the list. That's all the time we have on Sports Pause this week. Make sure to check out Q30 online and follow us on social media at Q30 Television. He's Aaron Epstein. I'm Seth Fromwitz. And to our friends and family observing Yom Kippur, L'Shana Tova Tikatev V'Tihatem. May you be inscribed and sealed for a good year. Good night.